So Radix is a fascinating new layer one protocol that was designed from the ground up for DeFi use cases. And they actually already have a token available for trading since late 2020. More on this in a bit. But what's super exciting is their upcoming mainnet called Olympia that's about to launch in late July. Now, fair warning here, this project is one of the most technically advanced and complex projects I've seen in a long time. I mean, it took me a while to grasp even though I have a technical background. So in this video, which is sponsored by the way, I'll break down the key aspects in a nutshell so it's it's easier to understand. And I'll share the most important points that you got to know about their tech, token, and upcoming mainnet. So if that sounds interesting to you, then strap in my friend and let's dive right in. So we got to start with the why. And for Radix, it's all about decentralized finance, which is one of the hottest use cases for all of crypto. And for good reason, right? DeFi just makes so much sense. It's financed by the people, for the people, with no middlemen setting arbitrary rules. But current blockchain networks aren't necessarily optimized for DeFi. And the Radix team sees three areas that can desperately use improvement. Like first, developers don't have great frameworks that they can use to develop DeFi apps. Most of them are pretty inefficient or unsecure, which slows down innovation and also increases the risks of mistakes, which affects us and users. Second, many scaling solutions that other blockchains use, like sharding or sidechains, break composability, which is one of the most important aspects of DeFi. And composability just means that DeFi apps need to be able to interact with one another in a standard and open way, and that multiple apps or actions can be done in a single transaction. So this is like executing a chain of trades from token A to token B to token C, all in one fell swoop. This is super important for DeFi as all of these projects are joining up with each other, right? Just look at those yield farmers. Without composability, their apps can't automatically farm each other. But that's just one example, right? Composability is used everywhere in DeFi, and that's what makes it so special. And lastly, number three, there's no direct incentives for developers who want to write DeFi code. So that kind of slows down innovation and growth in this space. All right, so I hope those make a lot of sense to you and you can see why they definitely need to be improved. There's really no debate there, right? But what is Radix doing to solve them? Well, they've designed their own Radix engine and scripto language, which is their version of the Ethereum virtual machine or EVM and Solidity. Basically, this is a secure and DeFi specific framework, which should help devs build faster while minimizing errors that could lead to hacks or exploits. They also designed Cerberus, which is their crown jewel consensus algorithm. Basically, it lets them achieve massive linear scalability while also maintaining that important composability that I mentioned earlier. And linear scalability, if that sounds confusing to you, is just the concept that as you add more computers, the network can process more transactions without any limit, right? That's why it's called linear. This is just how the internet, like with TCP IP works today. That means Radix will scale just like the internet did, which is a new paradigm for the crypto world. And lastly, and this is pretty cool by the way, they have a Radix blueprint library. Basically, if you write code for this library and other devs include your code in their apps, then you automatically get paid on Ledger royalties every time your code snippet is used. Now that is freaking awesome passive income for devs, and that also incentivizes having an amazing and robust library of reusable code. Now this is all just a really high level look so far, and there's so much more to it, but I wanna take a step back and look at why this solution is even impactful. I mean, in terms of devs, they're the lifeblood of any crypto project, right? And you gotta think from their perspective. Radix offers an improved framework plus direct rewards for code they write. Doesn't that sound super enticing to you? And if devs really like the whole experience, the word will spread, which will attract more builders. And that leads to better products and services for end users, which is what it's all about at the end of the day. In terms of Cerberus, Radix is ensuring that they can provide everything that DeFi projects want, scalability, security, composability, decentralization, so they don't ever have to worry about being too expensive or slow to use if someone builds a popular app that gets a ton of demand. The overarching goal here is for Radix to provide as many incentives as possible so that their ecosystem grows. And they aim to be the place where DeFi comes to capture more and more of that $100 trillion 
global financial market. Now, in terms of the tech, there's a lot to it, but there's really three main pieces to the puzzle. And like I said earlier, it is pretty complicated, but I wanna highlight them here for you. The first one is the Radix engine. Remember, this is kind of like the Ethereum virtual machine that executes all the logic of their DeFi apps. But there's a key difference here. The EVM is more of a black box where you can run any type of logic and everything goes. Whereas the Radix engine is more purpose built and restrictive in what's allowed. The benefit here though, is that there will be a lot less mistakes that will result in the loss of user funds. The second piece is their Cerberus consensus mechanism. And the background here is that the team was evaluating all the possible data structures out there, like traditional blockchains, directed acyclic graphs, block trees, and several others. But none of them were sufficient for what they were looking to do. So what did they do? They spent eight years in R&D mode to create their own. And that was how Cerberus was born. There is so much to it, like shard space, substates, Nakamoto, and BFT consensus. I'm not gonna bore you with the details here, but they they do have an amazing infographic series on their blog that you should check out if you want more info about this. I took a look at it and it definitely helped me understand how Cerberus works a bit more. Last but not least, the third piece is their smart contracts or what they call components. These are modular and reusable pieces of code that can be combined in different ways to create everything from basic contracts to full on dApps. And these concepts can be shared on their on-ledger marketplace too. That's where people can check out which components are available and the devs who created them get royalties on every transaction in which their code is used. To create these components, devs will need to write in a new specialized language called Scripto. And Radix mentions that as long as the dev is familiar with functional programming, Scripto should be relatively easy to pick up for them. Now, those are all the key features, right? But what about their token? Here's what you gotta know if you're thinking about investing. First, their total supply is currently 12 billion tokens. But once their mainnet launches, an emission process will kick off, which is capped at 12 billion additional tokens over a minimum of a 40 year period. So that means they will only ever have 24 billion tokens maximum. Well, what's the emission for though, you may ask? Well, you gotta remember, they use delegated proof of stake for their network. So there's gonna be stakers and those people get incentivized with the emission, which if we do the math, it's a max of 300 million Radix tokens per year spread proportionally to the amount staked. Another key point here is that the transaction fees are paid in Radix tokens and 100% of those fees are burned, which represents some deflationary pressure on the token supply. The last thing here is that there's actually two tokens, XRD and EXRD, or their e Radix token. That's an ERC-20 token, which they created first before their mainnet even launches. Basically, to try to make token distribution as decentralized as possible early on, and once their mainnet launches, we'll be able to exchange them one-to-one -one for each other. Now, mainnet, mainnet, mainnet. I've been mentioning this a lot, but this is a huge milestone for them, and it's coming super soon. The official name for it is Olympia, and it's also when their native XRD token will go live. The target launch date is July 28th, and it's gonna include six key aspects. V1 of the Radix engine, which will enable token creation, transactions, and staking. Also an uncharted version of Cerberus, which will have a fixed set of 100 validator nodes that will deliver finality in under five seconds and provide at least 50 transactions per second. Also, they're gonna have Radix nodes that everyone can spin up and run. They're gonna launch their XRD token, release a desktop wallet, and launch their own Radix Explorer. This has all been in the works for many years now, so it's a super exciting time for the team and community. And after Olympia launches, it's gonna kick off an aggressive roadmap to roll out the remaining features that I haven't mentioned above. Those will come out in their other major launches called Alexandria, Babylon, Xi'an, spanning throughout 2023. I'm really curious to hear what you think about Radix and their approach to build a layer one solution Tailor made for DeFi. Personally, I hold some Radix tokens because I find them promising and I think they have a high ceiling in terms of overall potential. And no, it's not just because this is sponsored, right? I don't have to hold their tokens. I could always just hold ETH, BTC, or just sell for USD instead. But for Radix, I intentionally decided to hold some for the long term. So anyways, I just wanna share my personal opinion and sentiment. Of course, this is not financial advice at all, but if you're curious to learn more and dive in deeper, then please check out the links down below that I'm gonna leave for you and go join their Telegram as well if you have more questions. So if you like this project, please smash the like button to let me know. I'm Kevin from BFB. I'll see you on the next one and cheers.